Hi Aquarius. Aquarius sun, Aquarius moon, Aquarius rising. This is a pretty big month for you in terms of a new start. Aquarians are interesting people. We know that. But we also know that you guys have this ability to live in a different time zone than us. And I don't mean it in a geographical sense, I mean it in terms of time. A lot of the time you live your life waiting for the rest to catch up. As Saturn moves into your sign for the first time in 28 years, in 29 years, <laughs> corrected myself there. It is a big change for all of us. And I believe it's a welcome change, the Empress. Mars also moves into your sign on the last day of March. And while I'm skipping quite far ahead to the future, Two of Wands, it's because right now you are thinking about the future. You're wondering what are the next two to three years, two, three, what are they going to bring for me? What is Saturn going to teach? Three of Pentacles. It will teach you just how much you contribute to the world, just how much you contribute to the future, just how much you contribute to everybody and everyone. And it will bring about a recognition and appreciation for the individual, which is something, again, you know a lot about. And while I'm making this sound a lot, Ace of Swords, while I'm making this sound, sound almost as though Jupiter is moving into your sign, which it's not, Jupiter is residing in Capricorn. While everyone is crazy about 2020 and what's going on in the world at the minute, you're kind of on 2021 when Jupiter does go into your sign. But for now, I would just like to pull you back and deal with Saturn and Mars. And Mercury, because Mercury is currently retrograding in Aquarius in your sign. And it will do until the ninth when it stations direct and then it will go direct in your sign and you get a second chance at an important conversation, possibly with a Libra, possibly with a Taurus. But I think you're getting an important conversation that you really, really, really want to have. And if you don't really, really, really want to have it, Eight of Cups, you need to have it. It's necessary because it will bring some kind of release, some kind of catalyst to change something that requires a decision. A decision that's possibly been postponed a bit, and I think for a lot of you it is work-related. And for others of you, it is to do with the home. Perhaps you have for a long time been in an environment, a community, a house, a dynamic that is restricting you somewhat and Pisces season, High Priestess, has come along to show you where you could rely a little bit more on your intuition. See, the thing about Jupiter being in Capricorn is that it is not exactly all sunshine and buttons for anybody. Maybe for Capricorns, but as a general collective, Jupiter is kind of dulled out. In Capricorn and kind of bummed out. It's it's sort of for the first time after being home in Sagittarius thinking, you know, maybe we should cut back on this and oh my goodness, this is doom and gloom. And you see it so much in the um on the news. And I would really listen to Aquarians and what's going on with things because they seem to have an idea of what way it's gonna turn out. And it's only because they they have that they have that insight into the future that we just don't have and Capricorn at the minute with Mars being there with Jupiter with Saturn with Pluto it's so heavy and so pessimistic and so gloomy and everything needs to be taken care of now and everything needs to be restricted and everything is this out or whatever the lovers but you guys have another idea you guys are able to think about your future in a way that is 
quite optimistic. Because Capricorn energy for you is high priestess energy. It is the mystical, it is the spiritual, it is the the kind of synchronicities and the kind of manifestations and the kind of dreams and everything that just turns your life topsy-turvy, but in a good way. King of Pentacles. And underneath, of course, Wheel of Fortune. Venus is in Taurus from the 4th of March right till the end. And it will connect beautifully with Mars being in Capricorn in your 12th house. Taurus being your fourth. So perhaps you are going to move home. Perhaps you are going to decide that you want to move in with a lover. Perhaps you're deciding to move for work. Or perhaps mentally you're moving from old terrain. Or situations that were quite vapid and multiplied into something a little bit more serious. Perhaps now you're moving from dating multiple people to dating one and being really quite happy about it and having really quite a good feeling about this person. And for other of you, others of you, it is moving from a job that requires so little of your delicious brain into something that requires you to think on your feet, be quite resourceful and also be quite boss-like. But of course for you, the image of a man in a suit provokes feelings of restriction and it provokes a feeling of the mundane collective. But that's not what this is. This is simply a love that is steady. This is a love that can last. It doesn't mean it's a love that's dull. In Pisces season, I think a lot of you meet a character, or for some of you it's business, but you find yourself in a love relationship nonetheless. Maybe you're obsessed with a cause. Maybe you're obsessed with someone. Maybe you're obsessed with what you're doing. And I think you kind of shy away from this type of thing typically because it seems like it might go further. But with Saturn going into your sign, Aquarius, it will be a beautiful time to have support. Someone that can be steady while you're learning about yourself. With Eight of Cups smack bang in the middle, you are now more than ever prepared to go after a dream that is personal, that is so very much in tune with who you are, the way that you vibrate, the way that you see the world, the way that you operate, you're so in tune to go after that, that you don't care about money. And Saturn doesn't mind if you don't care about money, but it wants you to respect it. And most importantly, in your first house, it wants you to respect yourself. And that is going to be an important lesson, an important theme. And there may be, for those of you that are single, Aquarius, a love relationship that is there to teach you how to connect with the universe, how to connect with your inner self to a point that is not simply running away from the deeper connections that you so often run away from. In terms of work, you're really putting yourself in a position where you're thought of quite highly particularly by team members, particularly by your friends, particularly by your peers and doors are opening up for you. But I think a lot of you that are looking for love within the workplace, you may find that it is very, very, very tricky to navigate once it ends, as detached as you are. Be careful with who you choose because they may not be the most suitable. And if they are, if you are compatible, it could grow into something that mixes both quite well. But it very much depends on where you are at a personal level. Whether you can decipher someone's intentions when Mercury is retrograding in your sign and in your sector of worth.
as it began in Pisces. Now Pisces season is a wonderful time for you money-wise, of course, because it is your second house of finances and with Mercury retrograding in it, it can make you a little bit silly with money. As I said, all this requires is for you to respect money, to understand that it is something that can do wonderful things for you, not something that you're a slave to. Similarly with love, if you are keeping some kind of relationship a secret, I think it may very well come out in Taurus season. Wheel of Fortune, Magician, the Queen of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands. If you are dealing with an Earth sign, which I think a lot of you seem to be, particularly a Taurus, there is magic there, but there's also quite a lot of struggle. Quite a lot of struggle. And it will require dedication that only the fixed signs can offer. And if you're dealing with a water sign, it seems very much that it is based on love and not money. Ooh, interesting dynamics going on underneath the Aquarius reading. Now, for those of you dealing with a Taurus, because I think it seems to be so many, it looks kind of good. And I think if one of you is committed to the relationship and the other one is not, I think there will be clarity there. There will be decisive action. Whether or not somebody leaves because of that, I don't quite know, but it will be clear. But I think for most of you, it's going to go quite well. When Mars moves into your sign, it really gives you this It gives you this sense of purpose that you so often find, but it it's different this time because Saturn's going to be there. It's different because you have a message and you feel almost liberated, which is unusual for Saturn because Saturn can be quite restrictive, but you also you feel almost liberated. But you run the risk of feeling chained to that liberation if you question over and over why you're doing it or you focus on the need to do it. You will lose a lot of joy in the process. What you want to do is go forward with the optimism, with the clarity and condensing down your options to something that feels very certain. And I think for a lot of you that are dating, I think there's one person will stand out and I think that it really could be something quite long term. King of Swords. <laughs> and the Four of Swords. And the Five of Wands. And the Page of Wands. Aquarius, you are going into an interesting dynamic one-on-one, -on -one, quite possibly with an earth sign. And I think for a lot of you it's business and I think for a lot of you it will require a temporary lull in order for you to get your spark back in what it is that you're doing and what it is that you need to do. And romantically speaking, if you are dealing with an earth sign, I think what seems to be going on is that at the minute in this Pisces season leading up to Aries season, they are reluctant to fight. With Venus and Taurus, it can make you a little bit argumentative. Not to worry, it's because you're passionate about something. It's because you feel very strongly about the way someone else was treated or the way that you're being treated or the way that the world actually works. But will you do anything about it? You may be called to do something about it. They may want to chill. That's okay. Keep it fun. Keep it light. With all your interactions with Venus being in Taurus, do try and keep it light. Do try and enjoy the fun. And if you are making a big move in work, I think it looks pretty good for you. If you're thinking of traveling somewhere, I think that looks pretty good too. If you're thinking of writing something, I think you should write it now. The Wheel of Fortune and the Magician. 
with the Queen of Pentacles underneath. You can make just about anything you want happen financially, particularly after the Virgo full moon. The Virgo full moon is so interesting because it is so... Uh, it is putting such a strong weight on your relationships with other people. The way that you connect with people. Could you go a little bit deeper? I think you probably should. The Virgo full moon that is opposite Neptune but making good links to Jupiter. Not the best time to make a big expenditure. but a great time to make a big emotional investment in yourself because some kind of spiritual synchronicity or some kind of lesson or some kind of truth becomes very clear to you and I think for a lot of you that have struggled in love because I think Aquarians do I'm just going to be honest I think as a sign you know you have this reputation for being quite detached and oftentimes being the player but I see Aquarius women in particular suffer very much in their head about love and romance because it is this, this, this confusion of, you know, because you, you guys are so far ahead. And I mean that so sincerely. And it's not a bad thing at all. But sometimes it can be lonely being quite far ahead when other people don't match up to the way you're thinking. You need someone that's very open-minded. And you may find it quite peculiar that there's a Taurus coming up here because they can be very traditional and very set in their ways. But it doesn't mean they're stuck in the one field. Same with the Scorpio, same with, same with the Leo, same with yourself. The fixed mode of being kind of stuck in your ways about a certain thing applies to you too because you are sometimes stuck in the future to the point of anxiety. And if you are in a committed relationship, I think it looks very much like you guys want to build something together that is a bit more solid. That may require time and may require you both to put your fixed modalities together. And if it's not even with a fixed sign, it doesn't matter. I think a lot of you, you're being required to pull on that steadiness that you actually do have deep down. You get a lot of clarity on why you've been back and forth about a particular issue with a friend or that thing that you just can't put your finger on but you feel as though it's going to happen. It is going to happen. But maybe not on the extremity that you're expecting. Because if you're thinking it and thinking it and thinking it, you're quite possibly thinking this thing into existence. Do you want to do that? Because you have a point mid-month around the Virgo full moon where you get a taster of what kind of contracts you are manifesting, what kind of intensity you are manifesting around you. And maybe if it's to do with work, you could look at a little bit, you could look a bit more at why you're feeling so anxious about a certain situation or why a certain person's behaving a certain way. Could it be that that's so deeply embedded in you from a past experience that you are actually making it so? You may find yourself dating somebody new that appears to be drips of what you want and then turns out to be more than what you want. You could find yourself going for a job with less pay, but as the love increases in what you do, it brings you more. As I say, you do not have to be a slave to money, but you must respect it in some form. Similarly with love, you do not have to be chained to your partner, but you must respect them. That all pays off. 
there's a magical eerie feeling to your love life it's almost as though there's a synchronicity there's an occurrence there is a feeling there is a presence of just knowing that something is going to be an important part of your path You'll know what I mean when you see it. At the minute, you're probably thinking, no. <laughs> Don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? There is, with that full moon in Virgo, a lot of jealousy, a need to assert your boundaries. A strong drive to go after something that's very true to who you are. I say you do it. With Saturn going into your sign, everyone is going to appreciate what you have, especially in terms of advice. You're going to be everybody's confidant. You're going to be learning a lot about yourself. And as I say, I think it's time to open up a little bit. Oyster, butterfly, and the stingray. View. I love the oyster card. It always means that you need to crack yourself open and open up because there's pearls within you. And the butterfly is also that metamorphosis, that deep transformation. Secrets do get revealed around that Virgo full moon. And no matter what it is, it develops a sense of confidence for you. Even if you have to leave something long standing before where you'd gone down a certain path and you'd made connections and you had made friends and you had made money and all these different things, it doesn't mean that you can't start again and be as connected. Even if other people are pressuring you to take a certain path, you will know what is right for you. You will know what way to go. You keep having this calling to do something, to change, to open up, to expand, to include, to connect, to love. And I think in March, you finally get the message. And you're going to do it. You're going to do it well. We'll get straight into the extended Aquarius. See you there. Bye.